say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Barn. That's right. We're going to get to the kitchen eventually, um, but we have some news. Since last time we talked, um, I think we opened up down here a couple weeks ago. Right. Uh, Mavis had two. Two girls. Mama Mia had two boys that looked like Holstein calves. That's right. But our, our lambing season is over. Everybody's done. Milkweed and Myrtle are getting ready to be let loose today, so we get to see the lambs flip again. People like that. I like yeah, that. I love yeah. watching them. First, their first taste of freedom. They're already jumping around in here like crazy, but <laughs> they get to stretch their legs, and I'm so glad. You know, a lot of people had lambing season this time, and when it happens in the dead of winter, right? and sometimes if you don't have the availability of, of to keep them cooped up, you know, sometimes it, it can get bad out there. Yeah. So many, many times, you know, you can lose a lamb to cold. So one of my concerns last time was Millie, had not been around the Babies, youngsters. Right. And you know what? She had a problem with chickens. Right. Now, sometimes people give up on a dog. Dogs can be trained. Now, some there are some hopeless cases. Some right. dogs can, and we're gonna talk about dog training later today because we got, you know who? My Murphy Murph. Murphy's over there. It's gonna get just a step of some of his training today. Now yeah. we're gonna let these girls out here in a little while, and we're also gonna talk about our beehives. Now, last year I had the weirdest thing happen. We had a nice warm-up in January, February. Right. And they completely disappeared, both hives. Yeah. So the other day, in the evening, I went up there and I put my ear up against the hive. Right. Something you don't want to do in the middle of summer, obviously. <laughs> but you can hear them working there. Mm -hmm. That's just a, good a sign. constant hum. A day like today, we'll go up and look here in a little while. We've got a lot to do on the farm today, but that's going to lead up to a big appetite. And man, do we have some good stuff. Everybody loved the spaghetti squash. It was delicious. And let me tell you what, it just you just have to try it. Kelly, thank you for the idea. Yeah. You got to, you know, and we knew it was out there. Everybody was doing it, but man, I'm telling you what, it's, it's making my good. mouth water. And tonight we're going to go a little bit Cajun. When it's when it's the dead of winter, we start thinking about the ocean. Yeah, I miss the ocean. And so <laughs> we're going to just forget about the fact that we're several hundred miles from it, and we're going to we're going to fix some seafood. Yeah. Here. So we got a lot to do on the farm. Myrtle and milkweed are dying to get out. They want out. So let's let them out. Watch them run around like we did last time. And let's see how everybody does. There's the confusion. And once again, Milton's got to check everybody out. He is the most docile, sweet guy. But again, they're they're guard animals in themselves. They they know he's not aggressive. They know he's not going to hurt them. They love him. And Milton getting his snack. That's my girl right there. Now. If y'all remember, not too long ago, she was just a tiny little puppy. She's all wet from her and Moses playing. So that's the original mommy of a lot of pretty little puppies. And there's the original daddy, reunited. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Such good animals, such they sweet are. animals. They're probably sweet. the best, sweetest dogs I've ever been around in my life, as oh, far man. as their nature. What do you smell? Wow, are they smell? thick, aren't they? They're huge. They're, They're so wonderful thick. dogs. Best guard dogs in the world. Now, earlier today, when the sun was really shining on the side of this box, there was a lot of traffic in and out there, kind of cleaning their doo-doo out and bringing out the dead, so on and so forth. Now, as I listen to the side of this box, the very, very noticeable hum. I've got a good, healthy population of bees in here. Now, we did not take any fall honey this year. We let them keep all of it. Now, this should be a good box. I checked the other box earlier. Everything's good down there, too. So the sheep are good, the dogs are good, the bees are good. You know, everything that we've showed you so far 
is going to provide us with food here on a small farm. We don't have a whole lot of acreage, but we've got a bunch of stuff going on. We got a chicken down there. Our other chicken passed away, I guess, of old age. But we get one egg a day. That adds up. We're getting ready to get more chickens. Last week we had a question on Facebook. Somebody says, "Why weren't you at the cabin?" And you know that's that was a good question though, because mm -hmm. you know we move around. Sometimes we'll be down on the patio. Right. Sometimes we'll be cabin cooking. Sometimes we cook in here. Sometimes if it's really cold or really hot, or rainy, well, we'll be in the house. You never know where we might cook over in the woods next week. That'd be fun. But I do still have a broken arm, and it was really muddy, uh, and I do not need to fall on this arm. Right. I want to thank a lot of nice folks, our Facebook family out there, Country Kitchen Facebook right. family, who ask how the arm is doing. An update. The doctor says, gave me, gave me a thumbs up. He says did. the bone is growing, so we're all good. And I want to thank Brenda Reynolds. Remember the seed lady? I do remember her. <laughs> who knitted me a sock. I can't get a glove on right now, right. so she knitted me a sock. It's perfect. So it's, I'm uh, using the sock for a glove right now. Keeps you warm. Keeps me warm. So thank you very much. We, we've got family out there. Yeah, we do. I, I'm not going to call it Facebook friends. I'm going to call it Facebook family. That's right. So we, we need to change it to, well, just change the whole thing to Facebook family. All right, now let me tell you something. Speaking of family, this book right here, I think it was originally printed in 1924 or something. And it, they print, reprinted it and reprinted it and reprinted it and reprinted it. Must be a good book. How to Train Your Bird Dog. Now, we're not training a bird dog right now, but I've trained many bird dogs. Right. And as a kid, I w would help guys, old guys, train their dogs. So listen to the first part of this book. Now, we're not training a bird dog, but we're training a dog. Listen to, to the magic in this old text. It says, Forward. It is the writer's firm conviction that the training of a bird dog is not so much a matter of rule as of art. Some men will fail utterly even when trying to accomplish a result in exact accordance with the best rules known. Others will somehow succeed splendidly, even though they may approach an apparently different opposition to all the accepted standards of practice. The most important rule of all, he goes on to say, is to love and know your dog. Make sure that he loves and knows you. Strangers can accomplish but little in harmony. Almost any boy can teach whatever he wants to most any dog. The reason is, that there's a sympathetic bond between them. So that says a lot about training a dog. Mm -hmm. Now for Christmas, among other things, you got a cute little puppy. So maybe I should train the puppy. <laughs> that would be fun. Uh -huh. All you, you do is probably... sit, he'd sit. <laughs> now here's the deal. There are gonna be people who watch this and they're gonna laugh at us. They're gonna say, I wouldn't do that. But you know what? I've always done things my own way. Mm -hmm. When people said you sh couldn't shoot a bow, I shot it with my teeth. And then I went into competitions, not ringing my own bell, and I beat him. That's right. Good for you. But the whole thing is, I want to train this dog. There's plenty of information out there. I've been looking online. I've been reading books. And I know dogs. We've been mm -hmm. around dogs our whole life. Millie used to be a chicken thief. That's right. She's not anymore. She's a and good And she girl. is a good dog. She takes care of everybody. Dogs can be trained. Murphy is smart. I'm Murphy is smart. smart. That breed of dog is generally very smart. Now, we're going to run him through some paces today. And I've been looking at the old timers, some Irishmen, mm -hmm. some Scottish people. <laughs> I've been, you know, the fellow we did the show with. Right. Now, he might look at this and say, you're messing up. But you know what? I'm going to learn through my mistakes. That's right. Now, listening to the old timers, you want them to enjoy the experience of training. You don't want to overdo anything mm -hmm. the first day. Now today, we've done nothing. This will be the first time. <laughs> this will be the first time. So one of the most important things that the old timers say is to teach them to lie down. Okay. That's one of the old rules. And, and like our friend said, when his dog's moving along, lie down. Right. And there's a whistle that goes along with it. We're not bothering with the whistle right now. So today, we're going to gently take him out, give him a long lead. He's going to have fun. We're going to work about 15 minutes, that's all. And I'm going to teach him to lie down. I'm going to try to teach him to lie down. That by gently pushing down, lie down, lie down, when he gets it. When he lies down, I'm going to take my foot and I'm going to stand on his lead. Right. So he knows that he's supposed to lie down until I tell him that'll do. Okay, interesting. Okay. He's going to understand that'll do? Well, that'll do. I we, like that'll that's, do. That's okay, let's move huh. on. Okay. So. That's what we're going to try to do okay. today. Um, we may get nothing. This, we may have a really good pet. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and if that's the case, we're very happy with yeah. it. But we're starting training today. Let's go see what happens. And then I'm going to stand on the cord so he's close to the ground. And then I'm going to let him up. I'm going to say, that'll do. I'm going to make a fuss over it. I'm going to give him a little treat. Okay. We got some good treats. Right. I'm guaranteeing <laughs> nothing. I think he'll do it. Let's go see what happens. Right. 
Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Good boy. Good boy. Lie down. Lie down. Good boy. Good boy. That'll do. That'll do. Good boy. Did you work up an appetite? Always. Like I'm always hungry. Farm. Starving. Well, here's what we're going to do. I like what I see. Now, a lot of people who don't even like oysters like oysters for Rockefeller. That's right. the, that's, they'll eat those when they won't eat them any If you like way. seafood, right. Now, if you haven't tried these, you really need to. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple recipe. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get some water boiling. Now, the thing about these are we like our oysters raw. Yeah. And we like lots of them Yes, we do. Raw. And hopefully very soon we're going to be eating some more. Be eating some more. <laughs> Now these, on the other hand, we're going to cook these a little bit and get, crack them open so they're easier, easier for us. Yeah. Get, them, get them a little bit cooked. Uh, we're just going to boil them for a few minutes with a little beer. And this is just for flavor. Just enough to cover the oysters. Then what we're going to do is add a little crab boil. Now this is in the bag. I'm just going to, we cut a little hole in the bag. We use this just a little bit for flavoring. Got all kinds of good flavors in there, but we use that little bit at a time. Also, Tony, just a little bit Always. of that. A secret that we learned from Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. From Scotland. That's my Uncle Bob. Here's your uncle. <laughs> now, I, well, let's reference back to Kentucky Field, and he did his frog legs. Those were good. <laughs> Extraordinary. Those are so, he's an amazing chef. So, but one of the things he did when he would cook a lobster or any kind of seafood, he would take a lemon, a little bit of celery, maybe a little bit of onion, and pop that in there. And those flavors will impart right. in that boil, along with that beer. Hmm, I'd say it'd be pretty good. Right. So let's take just a, cut a couple slices of lemon. So we're gonna drop those in. Not quite to boil yet. Take the top off some of that celery. Boom. That's it. We're gonna drop that in. And once we get to a boil, we're just gonna drop our oysters in for a few minutes. All right. We're gonna put those in there for a few minutes. It's just like steaming them. They'd open up just a little bit. It's gonna make it a lot easier for you to deal with them. Yeah. And we're gonna put just enough, just them in there long enough for them to crack open. You gotta thank Gary for the nice cooking. Yeah, you like that? Isn't that nice? Yeah, I like that a lot. All right, so we've got that going. I'm gonna start this little pan right here. I'm going to need about two cloves of garlic. All right. Probably three quarters of that onion. All right. Uh-oh, we're eye level with this onion. I know, I'm already smelling it and feeling it. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take that garlic and uh, these onions. We're going to saute those in butter. Yeah. How many recipes start like that? Every recipe. A lot. A lot of head butter and onion. Is that enough onions or you need more? I think it'll do. We're, gonna let the, we're going heavy on the butter here now. Put all these onions in here, along with our garlic. It smells amazing. It just always does. does. I mean, butter and onions. Remember how we used to just take um, onions, mushrooms, massive quantities of, of onions, mushroom, and garlic, and just eat them? Yeah. Especially when you found morels. That doesn't happen often Sounds enough. Sounds good right now. That's right around the corner. Yes. All right, about this time, you need to start thinking about preheating your oven to 400 to, you know, 410, 415 degrees, something like that. Because this is not going to go in the oven for a long time. No. I'll tell you what, Nikki, if you'll take some of these, just cut them up just a little bit. That, that's already kind of small, so that's good. Yeah. This is going to wilt pretty quick. Now, if you had frozen spinach, you could use that as well. So we're going to take our spinach and put it in here. <laughs> All right, now you see what we got going on here? Should I taste it? You probably should here in a minute. Might need a little more butter, what do you think? You always Are you need opposed more butter. to that? No, we always need more butter. You know, speaking of butter, Maybell is back with Todd, our buddy Todd Harn, and she is, hopefully, found a boyfriend. I think she has. We and heard. if everything goes right, I think about August, we should have another calf. Good. And we talked about this. If we have a young lady, she's going to stay with us. I know. Look at that. Do you want the rest of the spinach? I don't see what it would hurt. Do you? Nope. We might as well use it. Go ahead. I'll plop just a little bit more butter in there. I'll tell you what let's do, Nikki. If you'll take me about, I don't know, four ounces pepper jack cheese. Yum. Yeah, go ahead and shred that if you don't mind. Oh, Wow, and that's a good shredder. Yes, so once is. again, I cringe. Great I, I've taken this, off. Yes. You can take skin off. I've taken this. a hide off before doing that. All right, so I'm going to take a quarter pound 
cheese and melting that. That's not going to be good. That'd be terrible. Tell you what, let's do. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of mozzarella in here too. Okay. Just about that much, and we're going to put some on the top at the end too. Now, see that right there already is the flavor. Now, if you want a little salt, a little pepper. Yeah. If you want a lot of salt, a lot of pepper. But Lots of pepper. Take a little bit, half and half. I don't know how much was that. A couple of tablespoons. Yeah, probably. All right, so Nikki, I'm going to grab these little guys out. Who you can are, reach them better than they're me. They're cracked open now. Yeah, that makes it easy for me. You ever seen a one-armed man shuck an oyster? There's a lot of cursing involved. I'm not talking about me. Oh, no. That's it's, a good excuse to have me the, do it, too. The other guy's one arm, yeah. All right. Those I'll be able to just peel open as much as they're open. They'll be Oh, yeah, just my pop hand. them with a little butter knife. I'm going to hand you the oysters. Ready? Pop those open. I don't even think I need a knife. Ta-da. Look at that little crab. Oh, yeah. Now, here's what you find. I want you to look at this. Many, 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 many oysters. Look here. When I dump that out, that is not uncommon. How many times have we sat down? Right. You know, you think, oh, no, there's something in my oyster at many fancy, fancy, fancy restaurants. I want a pearl. That's part of it. They won't hurt you. You found me a pearl once, remember? I did find my you a pearl, pearl once. I lost my little pearl. Where did that go? But that's not uncommon at all. And it's not gross. It's not nasty. It's just a little crab. Wish his legs were bigger. We'd eat them. Yeah. If you will, Nikki, hold this tray over here, and I'll put this wonderful stuff. I'll do a little bit out on each one. Where have we seen this before? Yum. Anyone that likes any kind of seafood lo would love these, even if you don't like oysters. You think that's good enough? I could eat them like that. No. Okay. Bread crumbs. Yum. <laughs> Just a little bit of bread crumbs. And you know, oysters are pretty cheap at the store. They are. Yeah. Not when you're on the coast, they're really cheap. Mm -hmm. If you can find them fresh, 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 it's even better. So let's do some bread crumbs. How about some more cheese? How about some more cheese? Mm. I don't think anybody. Nobody hates I don't think cheese. the cheese police would show up if we decided to put just a little more. I need some. I don't think we're going to be in trouble. I'll have you pop that in the oven if you don't mind. We just set these out here. We've let them cool down a little bit. We took a break, got things cleaned up for our next recipe. But these are. Yum. The mozzarella Can I try cheese. One? Oh, no, I, I'd, I'd prefer you let me eat all of these. Oh, wow. Because I heard it builds calcium. Mmm. I want all the gooey stuff, too. You know, it's fine with oysters. Wow. You notice there's almost a progression. As if you like a glass of wine, which mm -hmm. is, you know, in moderation, right. can be good for you. But when you start out with a wine, you like something sweet, and you right. gradually go to something drier, and you kind of find your area of wine that you like. With oysters, you never want to eat them. Nobody wants to eat them raw first. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> this is usually the way people go through the oyster door. That's how you start. That's right. This is how you Coated. start. And then you try them steamed, maybe, but man, oh, man. You got them eating them raw. See, we, we eat them raw so much, we forget how delicious this is. Now, of course, they're probably a little more healthy raw. This sure is good that you, mm. all the stuff you created. Wow. This is our appetizer? This is our appetizer. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to stop for just a minute. The cameras are going to stop. We're going to wear this out, and then we're going to come back with our main course. Okay. Can I have another one? Mm-hmm. Let's eat them all. If you look up etouffee in the dictionary, what's it going to tell you? It's a spicy dish stew. Okay with seafood and vegetables. Now that's a pretty broad interpretation really when you think about it. So we have been all over the place and had different folks, different restaurants, different etouffees with some with a really dark roux, some of them with no roux at all. Now what I'm gonna do right over here is I'm gonna get me a really hot pan. Now most people tend to overcook their shrimp. We don't wanna do that right. because when you do it gets rubbery and it loses that, that really good texture that it has. So what I'd like you to do, Nikki, if you will, is take me a little Tony's there and just shake on. That's got the extra heat in it, so be easy. Be easy. Keep keep going. Just now it depends on how much heat you want it. This is adjustable. All right. Now what I'm going to do, I'll tell you what. Just go ahead and pop. Hand uh -huh. me that, and I'm going to pour them all in there. Ready? And I'm going to. You can tell it's a hot skillet. You keep cooking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably go a minute, minute and a half at the most, with a good hot pan on one side, and then I'm going to turn it over. I'm not going to stir that up much. I'm going to let it go. All right, now, here's the deal. You can do this with fresh shrimp, and we just happened to have some that was frozen that was already deveined and already, you know, 
pre-cooked and ready to eat, but still, same thing. Let the juices come out, let them get all cooked up, get the seasoning going, and we want to, we want to keep that juice in there for stock. So that has gone about long enough. So okay. we're going to take that off and set that aside. Yum. Should I try one? No. You probably should. Make sure. Should I make, make sure, sure it's good? We don't get poisoned. I would say that would equal to a three quarters of a large onion. Right. Would you not say yeah. that's about right? No. So what I'm going to do is get my butter going over here. It's a big old slab of butter. Now, if you'll also cut me up some green pepper. All right. Now, those three things right there in the skillet together. Amazing. That's just the smell. In butter. Let's go ahead and I'll tell you, this, I'll bring this over. Don't burn yourself. Pop that in there and let's saute that all up. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. I tried one of your shrimp. Very good. I could eat them like that. Now, see the juice that was in. We're not getting rid of that. That's going to be part of our stock. I'll tell you what, if you don't mind, would you take that pork chop? Mm -hmm. Fat on? Not that tiny, actually. Yeah, oh yeah, gotta have the fat on. All right, we're getting there. See, we're getting the right texture there. That smells amazing. All right, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Hand me the seasoning. Okay, which one? Tony? Tony. Now, you want a little kick to this? Whatever, you'd just always- a, Just yeah. a little kick? That's I'm fine. gonna put a little more seasoning in here now. You know, if you had to measure that out, that's just, that's just a dash. I'm gonna take me just a little bit of flour and I'm gonna thicken this up. I'm gonna start off with a tablespoon. Let's just start taking that up just a little bit. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's take some tomatoes. Four tablespoons. Yeah. We never measure anything out, but I'd say that's about right. Now we're going to come back with some beer. That was a half a cup. Probably. And let's have some chicken broth. Right. I'm going to probably put two-thirds of a cup in there. All right, and you see how that's thick already? Wow. So at this point, it goes fairly quickly. If you'll hand me a dash of hot sauce, I'm gonna bump right. it up. Look how thick that is. Look at that. Look, see, wow. it goes quick at this point. That's the thickness one. Just a dash, because we're already got some heat in there. You're heating it up. Aren't give you? me some more star sauce, because we're there. Oh, it's a beautiful oh, wow. thing. Look at the consistency we've got. Sounds amazing. A little worse star sauce, eh, a little bit more. Just a dash. Oh, do you smell it? Yes, I do. It smells amazing. The only thing we have left to do is pop our little bit of pork and our shrimp back in there with the juice. Yeah. All right, we are there. So I'll tell you what, if you can get us a plate of rice, we'll plate this up, put a few green onions on top, and we're ready to go. Yay. Okay. I don't know whether just to stare at it. Why don't you stare and I'll eat? Can I stare while you're eating? Yeah, just watch me. You want to watch me? Look at that. I mean, just look at <laughs> look at the beautiful steamer. All this. Smell that smell. That's amazing. But I'm ready. I can't wait any longer. That shrimp is really good. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Great flavor. That took wow. maybe 15 minutes. It's buttery tasting too, and creamy, buttery. I don't know what you did, but wow. Well, 15 minutes maybe, 20 minutes most. Oh, that's, good. that's you know so good. You can do anything in your kitchen that you can get at a wonderful restaurant. That is a, it's still awful pretty, but. It's pretty. I'm gonna eat it here in a minute, but I got something I gotta tell you about. Okay, what you can tell me about? It's our Facebook page. Oh. All you have to do is go to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, hit like, and then we can talk. Okay. We have lots of friends in there who talk about all kinds of crazy stuff and fun stuff. I got one more thing you probably need to know about. Okay, what? If you saw this first time show and you thought, I wonder if they got any more recipes. I bet they do. I bet they do. Like hundreds of them. Where would you find them, Mrs. Farmer? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Click on recipes, how-tos, different segments we've had over the years. So as the day grows long and it turns into night, we're gonna have to turn these cameras off and just Eat massacre it Eat it all. that plate of food. Right. But it is all about good times, good friends, and we're super good eats. We'll Way see to you go. next week on Tim Palmer's Country Kitchen. And we're digging in the now. Shrimp's amazing. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502 319 0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, 
Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. 